Welcome back to Business AM. And it, just in case you're just tuning in right now, which I hope you're not, my name is Ingrid Nantege, and I'm sitting in for my colleague Simba Elijah Kiyage. Now, my next guest is the Bolt Regional Operations my Manager, Mika Kenneth. Welcome to the studio, Mika. Thank you very much, Ingrid. Bolt. I'm sure there's so many questions out there. Bolt is one of those companies that is just at the tongue of sure. every Kenyan, pretty much, because mm -hmm. I feel like it's one of those services that people use on an almost regular basis. For sure. Now, to start with the basics. Mm -hmm. This year, for the longest time, we knew Bolt as Taxify. Mm -hmm. Until just one day, I checked my phone screen, and I'm like, wait, what's this icon? What's going on here? And then I realized Taxify had now rebranded to Bolt. Uh -huh. Usually when we see a situation where companies that are, like, there's nothing really go like, nothing wrong with them, mm -hmm. now rebrand to something else is because something big, something major is coming. For sure. My question then is, Taxify to Bolt, mm -hmm. what informed this decision? How did we get here? Good question. Uh, how we got here is we outgrew our Taxify name. You know, Taxify started six years ago right. as a taxi aggregating application. Mm -hmm. um, with the process of time, we have seen tremendous growth uh, in that line of service. And we felt that Bolt is, what is, is a name that would clearly exemplify our future our vision, um, because right now we are expanding into way more services than just taxis. Like for instance, we have electric scooters, and, and just today already we'll be, um, we've already announced that we're launching the food delivery product as well, wow. uh, right? And like in East Africa, we have border borders. We were the, the first ones in Kenya to have border borders mm -hmm. on our application, on the same applications. Uh, and then um, in Mombasa, we have tuk-tuks. So we are very adaptable to local market, local situations. And we felt the name Bolt uh, represents speed and the future, which is uh, what we want to drive. Um, our, our full vision is really being Africa's and ideally the, a global super app, where when you go in on the application, you're not going in traditionally for the taxi service. Taxi can be one of the services, but across many other uh, items as well that we could cross-sell on the same, same application. So Bolt exemplifies this future. So you mentioned that, uh, so the reason Bolt, I mean Taxify is now Bolt is because it's more in line with your vision and dream for the company. For sure, yeah. Most recently, you also merged your go category with mm -hmm. your base category. Yes. What informed this decision? Did you also just outgrow what was going on? What's the vision? What's now the thinking behind this? Okay, yeah, that's a very good question as well. Um, so, uh, you, you must be referring to um, July last year. Yes. Uh, um, July last month. Yes. Uh, when we merged the both categories. Yes. So, uh, we, this was a result of a long, ongoing um, driver economics uh, study that we had been um, engaging in. So we ideally took down all the costs that go into a trip. Uh, everything, ideally from vehicle ownership costs, operating costs, and, and just analyzed how this cost compares with the prices for, the, for both products. So ideally, Go category was uh, targeted at the low end, low low priced, price sensitive niche, mm -hmm. whereas the base category had more like a, a premium cars or like bigger engine capacity cars, about 1500cc cars. Right. So um, the result of our study uh, indicated that there was no clear product differentiation uh, between between both categories. Mm. Ideally, when you will order for Go or when you order for base. It's, you get almost the same car, right? Because uh, our band of th the bandwidth of cars we have in the local market is not as wide as we have in other markets. Okay. We just have like 1300 cc cars and 1500 cc cars, and a few lower than 1300 cc. Right. So we thought to uh, we are very data driven. So the analysis and the result of the on long ongoing um, 
market review uh, indicated that it is best to merge one category. This had two uh, resultant effects. One, which we are very driver centric. So this boosted driver uh, earnings per trip and okay. also per hour by about more than 10%. Oh, wow. And on the other side, because this is a marketplace, we always look at two sides of it, right? We care about the drivers and we also care about our users, our everyday passengers. Mm -hmm. So this definitely improved the affordability and convenience of, of, um, of, of, of the platform, whereby we had like very, very short arrival times mm. because we got very happy drivers right. that were excited to complete the, every trip that was oncoming. So you naturally get about less than two minutes arrival time anywhere in Nairobi with Bolt. I'm so glad you brought that up, the aspect of like just driver a gratific like driver satisfaction, sure. motivation, mm -hmm. because of every, obviously like we've seen what's been happening in yeah. the industry with the digital yeah. taxi industry. There's just been a go slow, so many complaints. However, when you mm -hmm. look at Taxify, even on the customer mm -hmm. side, you'll see that prices compared to maybe other providers or other uh, mm -hmm. players in the industry. Sure. Bolt is pretty favorable, even sure. when you do a direct comparison. Exactly. So, my, however, even when these strikes or whatever happens, mm -hmm. you're also in a way affected. Definitely. My question then is, mm -hmm. with the recurring strikes, the ghost law, how mm -hmm. has that in any way affected you? Even with all these innovations mm -hmm. and having a perfect strategy to make sure that the customer yeah. and the driver exactly. are happy. Yeah. How has this affected you? Well, uh, you're definitely referring to the June mm. um, industrial in industry-wide strike exactly. by by drivers. Right. Um, we had already um, <coughs> because we already have very frequent driver engagements mm. every every month. We have a driver focus group discussion round tables with where we invite our, our most active drivers, and you know we already like receive real-time feedback, and every day, Monday through Friday nine through five we are have an open door policy for anybody on our platform whether being a driver or mm -hmm. a rider can walk in and speak um, with our dedicated customer service team and it's a very individualized one-on-one -on -one conversation so um, through through this yes it did affect uh, because of course drivers um, a, a, a small section of drivers not like the entire industry a small section of drivers of course did express um, sentiments about uh, industry specific issues, but these were not uh, like ideally pinpointed to bold mm -hmm. because through our continuous engagement, we had already um, addressed much of the earnings issue. Uh, we already have like very, very attractive driver parks. Mm -hmm. Ideally, for every cost element, we have a negotiated driver park right. already. So, like for insurance, we already have like a in partnership deal, like with Pesa Bazaar where drivers get like way less than market rates. Oh, wow. For car wash, for instance, we have a negotiated deal with uh, uh, extreme, ex ex extreme Clean, where drivers get way less than market rates uh, car wash um, for their cars. For fuel, we have a deal with Total, and drivers get 3.5 sh shillings off oh, every wow. liter, right? And uh, for AA as well, the AA of Kenya, we have negotiated uh, the cost of compliance, which is getting the cost of doing the course to get a PSV driving license. So for every cost element, we deliberately make efforts, you know, to get best partnerships and best driver parks for drivers on our platform, just to increase their overall satisfaction and drive their economic value as well with us. Even with all those perks and incentives, which are very, very important in yeah. the business that you're running, yeah. um, as Bolt, if you don't mind me asking, mm -hmm. sure. in terms of strategy, specifically mm -hmm. for an online business, exactly. I want you to, you've talked about it, but I want you to kind of take me through that. And the reason I ask, mm -hmm. and specifically center on the aspects of online business, sure. is because we're seeing some of the other mm -hmm. uh, digital taxi apps yeah. now looking to somehow deviate away from being fully just online mm -hmm. to now, or you can just call directly to get, which, like, doesn't that kind of now go away from the reason why you said it? I want you to talk to me a bit about your online strategy and maybe going forward, are you seeing a scenario where mm -hmm. 
we'll see something different or is it going to strictly stay digital is that working for you currently mm. in this uh, region especially where you know yeah uh, digitalization is just being embraced it's not fully there for sure yeah well a very good question i like that so bolt signifies speed light electricity so and you know because we feel the future is in digital world right the future is not being retrogressive right so we are very forward looking and we want to enable technology in every business process so um just just taking a step back taxify the old name mm. began as a taxi aggregating company right this is very, uh, and way before that, you know, it used, used to be that you would pick up your phone and dial up a curb at, at the call center. Then the call center will check on the map and see which is the nearest taxi and then make a dispatch, right? Of course, the arrival times for that is usually about 10 minutes. But when we have um, technology en enabling this dispatch, like automatically from your app mm -hmm. to the driver app uh, and through very fast server right. times, then we able to drive down that down to less than almost a minute across Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So how the future looks like is embracing more technology, just uh, putting more speed in, into, into the pickup times, into the dispatch uh, platform. And we are not keen on following anything that is mm. a little bit retrogressive right. in our view. Yes. So uh, Mika. Sure. The industry right now, initially when the digital uh, taxi uh, era came into Kenya, oh. there were not too many players. As a matter of fact, there were just a few a handful that we know of. Obviously, both being one of them. In fact, your entry into the market was like, oh, we needed this. Because sure. then, obviously, competition, a little competition is good. Definitely. However, some would argue that the market is getting a bit saturated because mm -hmm. they were seeing so many so many other digital taxes coming mm -hmm. some local some not local how has that affected the industry or has it not affected the industry as well mm -hmm. at all how has that put you on how has that as both mm -hmm. made you have to now go back to the drawing board mm -hmm. to figure out okay now what are we going to have to do great so it's definitely red hailing is a very um big market mm. africa overall is a market of about one billion people right Nairobi alone is a market of about 5 million people. So it is e usually, and the barriers of entry are not as high. So it is easy to have many players interested, definitely, as well, in a piece of the market as well. And we love competition. But we have a strategy that differentiates You're competitive. <laughs> you love competition. <laughs> yeah, we're competitive. Right. right? Um, and we like being ahead. We like being several steps ahead of the industry as a role as a whole or, or or like our closest uh, peers so um, we definitely have a very clear ways of differentiating our services mm -hmm. so we look at it like as a marketplace right. so I in a marketplace the first thing we look at is the regulatory framework mm -hmm. so we engage very much with the stakeholders uh, the largely government and authorities that manage our the particular platform which we, the particular line of uh, transport which we are currently operating in, in the right hailing. So this is like uh, engaging a lot with the National Transport and Safety uh, Authority, for instance, uh, because they regulate uh, this industry. The other part of the value chain that we look at is drivers, which we spoke about, you know, en ensuring that they have above market rate uh, returns driving with bolts as compared with any other alternative including street driving and then the other thing that we the other section of the marketplace that we focus on most is on the riders as well our passengers the the, the overall uh safety experience that uh because riders look at three things when choosing a platform so safety affordability and convenience convenience, convenience is yeah. arrival time right. so we keep three, those three items on top of our business strategy. Everything we do is focused on safety. Everything we do is focused on being more the most affordable option and definitely the one that will give you the best, shortest arrival times. With that said, let's dwell a bit on the regulatory framework Amazing. point that you mentioned. Yeah. 
I'll just ask, is it, do you feel like it's favorable enough or more needs to be done when it comes to the laws and the regulations that govern the digital taxi industry? Well, um, th that's a very nice question as well. So the thing is, the digital, digital taxi industry in Kenya is relatively young. Oh yeah, that's true. Um, we have had great successes and a lot of, a lot of experience in uh, European markets and other African markets in helping governments and the regulators uh, adopt policies and data-driven uh, strategies mm -hmm. to better understand and regulate this industry. Mm -hmm. So also like on a, on, a local, on a local level, on a Kenyan level, we have a very professional and very uh, experienced uh, policy and regulatory team that engages uh, a lot you know, with um, the Ministry of Transport, for instance, uh, Ministry of Interior, and different uh, stakeholders within the, the overall regulatory framework. And we love to share the data that we have mm -hmm. uh, in just to help governments, just to help uh, better formalize this. But that said as well, the current structures that in terms of um, driver requirements that the government has put in place for Kenya are very world world class okay yeah because they require a police clearance certificate for instance before a driver is certified to drive the public uh, as a PSV driver they require him to have more than three years of experience and a lot more that we that we adopt as part of our onboarding processes as well Mika you've mentioned some of the innovations that you're going into from now going into food delivery and all the other things that you've mentioned however mm -hmm. I really really want to pick your mind on now your future prospects like your future plans for the Kenyan market what are we looking at all what right. are we anticipating expect bold in every urban population it was about time uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but so why just urban the person in the rural i mean you don't think well that's the market for you in the rural area no, because then we have a situation mm -hmm. where and i'll tell you this is from experience mm -hmm. you know in this work that we do we have to cover stories yes. obviously in some of those rural areas sure. and usually when you're planning how to get there you'll be like oh uh, we can just find a way of getting there and to move around within the mm -hmm. rural areas and you're like oh no never mind they don't have bolts don't worry. you know what i mean bolts so i you think covered. He, like I, I want you to talk to us about the plans for the urban areas mm -hmm. and why not the rural areas. Amazing. So, uh, Bold got you covered. Bold All got your us needs. covered. Yeah. <laughs> so currently we are in eight. Uh, well, we, we we will define them ci as cities right. on our end, but they're not defined like as cities within um, our demographic uh, analysis. So, like in eight urban centers, this is Mombasa, Nairobi, Thika, Naivasha, Nakuru, Eldoret. Kisumu and Kakamega. This is ideally the entire line of Nairobi from the sea to the lake. This is, this is so this definitely we have, we are looking at more urban centers uh, where we could definitely scale out. Right. And this was in response to, just like you said, mm -hmm. uh, there's lots of businesses mm -hmm. uh, which have like a regional reach within the country and they will want one platform that they can use uh, in Nairobi and, and extend the same same convenience uh, into the other, how do I call them, towns? Towns in Kenya, mm, urban much. centers, yeah. right? Mm. And also, like a lot of individuals as well, a lot of, most of our passengers are uh, saying, hey, uh, we enjoy your services in the city, but when I go home, then we don't have the same convenience. So it, it, we are very excited with this expansion uh, journey that so far that's brought us to eight cities uh, within Kenya and to extend the same affordability, convenience, and safety um, across eight other urban centers. And definitely be sure we will inform you when we have more coming. OK, uh, you'll probably inform us here. Yes. So when you're ready, just let me know we'll host you back right here. <laughs> so For finally, sure. Mika, I yes. need to ask you about your journey from when you entered. And I'm talking about just paint a picture for us mm. so we understand. Because you, you started off as Taxify. 
that was just an ad taxi aggregate, what those terms that you've been yeah, using, sure. yeah. to now you've diversified into all these things. I mm. mean, you, you've done all these, you've got into all these partnerships just to make sure the driver is comfortable. Yeah. But now talk to me about the journey. For example, mm. Mika, tell me, when we came into the Kenyan market, we yeah. started off with 20 riders. Yes. We're now in um, August 2019. We've grown to this much. Yeah. In 2020, we hope to have this much. Just take me through the journey from where you started to where you are and hope to get mm -hmm. in terms of just driver numbers just so that people can know mm -hmm. like you know with bolts like for sure every town i go to to prove what you've just been telling me in your last point absolutely for sure we we began our operations in kenya three years ago uh globally we just celebrated our sixth birthday last week so but in kenya we've been here for three years right it's been an exciting exponential growth phase which is probably why you're still here <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> definitely and we're here we're here for the long term uh, the long haul yeah for the long haul <laughs> right. you know uh, our 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 vision is to revolutionize urban transportation and transportation just doesn't include taxi mm -hmm. it includes everything that needs to move mm -hmm. parcels food and many other exciting categories that we will definitely uh, bring in mm -hmm. but when the time for announcing publicly will yeah. be there we'll definitely loop you in so um, currently, we have grown in terms of uh, our driver base, yes. the, the drivers on our platform. In, I will not be specific with the numbers, okay. but I will give you like a picture okay. to, to demonstrate the size. Okay. It is big enough to ensure you have about two minutes or under two minutes arrival time across any of the eight uh, urban centers we are operating okay. across Kenya. Mm -hmm. That's a huge That's, Yeah, two plan. minutes? Yeah, mm -hmm. dozens of thousands. Right. So, and all of all this is uh, accounts, uh, people that go through a very stringent onboarding process. Mm -hmm. All of all this is people that we have constant 24-7 interaction with. Either online chat, visitors in the office, uh, regular roundtable meetings. So we have a very, we maintain a very close, personalized, uh, touch and feedback loop with our drivers as well with our riders as well because mm. every trip has a feedback loop there's a rating system for every trip every trip has a sos button just in case um in the unlikely event that you'll be in a medical emergency right yeah so bold got you covered in all that finally 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 mika sure talk to me about the future now this is generally speaking all right of the digital taxi industry in Kenya, mm. and this is even in the midst of the myriad of challenges that you've been facing. Mm -hmm. And like do a comparison, does traditional taxi stand a chance of even ever reviving in this industry? What's the path? What's the future for digital taxi vis-a-vis -vis now what we like to refer to as traditional taxi? Because digital taxis, you guys have revolutionized Absolutely. the transportation sector yes. and just the cab railing industry. So sure. just talk to me about that. Um, the future is ideally technology. The, the future is uh, enabling every process through technology. And this is what Bolt is all about. Uh, the traditional taxi hailing w had a lot of flows, which we were happy to, to, to see the chance and the opportunity in it and to leverage and bring in value. So the traditional taxi, you never guaranteed about arrival time. Mm -hmm. You're never guaranteed about the background checks done on the person who is driving you, unless maybe it's somebody personally known. And if it's somebody personally known, then it's not scalable because he will not be in eight urban centers at the same time. Uh, so we have not entirely like, uh, we, we, we avoid using the word that we have disrupted the traditional market, mm -hmm. but we have revolutionized. We have brought, we have added uh, like a level, like an extra layer of revenue stream to the former, like bulk of our drivers mm -hmm. on our platform who are definitely previous uh, street hailing, they were using street hailing for means of living. But now their earnings have increased by more than twofold uh, by being on the platform. Right. Because when, when you're having a traditional, when you, with a traditional model, yes, you, you'll get a dispatch to go to a location, but you don't have a guarantee of coming back, for instance. But Bolt is everywhere. We have active riders, uh, passengers wanting to use our service across many parts of the city. So uh, this definitely gives 
drivers on our platform vis-a-vis -vis traditional, like a way, way better 2x or 3x mm. more earning opportunities. Mm. So the future of this industry really is in technology. Um, and this is what Bolt is heavily investing in. And this is what we see uh, ourselves in 2020, like Bolt in every urban center. Right. Affordable, convenient, safe. Fast. Fast. Lightning. <laughs> so, uh, I know I said that was the last one, sure. but I have to ask, and the reason I saved it for last mm -hmm. is because, like, mm -hmm. you just have to. For sure. I mean, we have to conclude. <laughs> People don't like to talk about money, but how do yes. you then calculate your earnings in mm -hmm. terms of, like, what goes to Bolt, what goes to the driver? How does that work? All right. Uh, so, how, how it works is uh, Bolt invests in technology, Bolt invests in marketing, Bolt, in, Bolt of course, we have uh, uh, op various operational expenses. So this is covered within the commission that we take from every trip. Mm. Uh, we currently have like one of the lowest uh, commission rates, right. which is 15% okay. for Nairobi right. and across other... Um, oh, so it differs d depending on where you are? Because um, you said for Nairobi. Yeah, globally. Uh, okay. Globally, like we, we take a, an adaptable uh, model. Oh, but okay. ideally, we are al always take um, like a more driver-centric approach, which is always take the least, right. um, Compar compared to any other player mm. in the market. So for Nairobi and other urban centers within Kenya, it's 15%. So the driver will take home 85% of the trip fare. And the trip fare is usually calculated to factor in every imaginable cost, right. or every not imaginable, every actual cost, including the cost <laughs> of yeah. purchasing the vehicle, right. servicing the vehicle, financing the vehicle, the cost of interest, and mm. the cost of uh, even factoring in as far back as salvage value of the vehicle, the, f the tolls that you will pay, the car wash, the overnight si uh, parking fees, like every actual operational expense that goes into maintaining a vehicle. And then over and above that, leave a very um, profitable margin for take home, which, will, which ensures that all drivers on our platform earn way above uh, or like relatively um, above the average mm -hmm. um, income l earnings level of, of the country. We monitor this like every month, every week. Mika, thank you so much for joining us today on the show. Thank Unfortunately, we've come to the tail end and I really actually need to rush out of here because I, go need, I, need, I have to rush to another meeting and I have to hail my bolt. Amazing. <laughs> you right after this. But I really, really appreciate you for Thank coming. You. I wish you all the best. Thank you for having us, Ingrid. Of course, to more growth. Sure. So we've come to the end of the show. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Ingrid Nantege. Tomorrow, this makes me very sad, the actual host of the show, Simba Elijah Charles Kiage, will be back in studio. Have a wonderful the rest of your day, but you can ha keep the conversation going on our social media platforms at Metropole TV KE on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Have a very wonderful day. Thanks Thank for you. coming.